This is Renee Rabbit. I just got back from our Chief Experts Summit where we teach everything Chief. I teach the advanced users and this is kind of an advanced method and we're going to go at an advanced pace. Now, I've got a link to a video right now. Yep, it just flashes on the screen real quick. You might have to rewind for that. That link takes you to a video by Scott over at Chief Architect where he goes over how we might be able to make a gridded acoustical tile in a ceiling with lights. So that is a great method. It works. No problems there. But it's not quite dynamic enough for me. So I've got a method here where we can make a coffer ceiling or some kind of gridded acoustical tile. And again, we're going to go at an advanced pace here. Now, something to note, we're going to utilize a polyline, but there's two hotkeys you could assign that could essentially give you the function of maybe 30 different functions. What I'm talking about here is rectangular polyline and then our convert polyline. This gives us all of these options. So essentially, you're assigning two hotkeys to get all of these different functions. That's a really great pro tip. So... If I hit escape a couple times, it's going to get me to the polyline tool in case we got off of that polyline tool. That's just default. So I'm on the polyline tool. I'm going to draw this out as I'm drawing this out. Tab or enter. If I have polar unchecked, I can specify. I want a grid that's 24 by 48. We can see we're dragging in the negative Y value. If we look down at the bottom of the screen, positive leg here is up towards the line. Negative leg is down. Same thing. Positive leg X is towards that leg negative x is over to that left side so i'm going to go negative 48 inches there we go i got a two by four now i'm going to move this polyline outside of the bounds of my wall and this is going to become clear to you in a little bit next i want to go ahead and choose multiple copy and then i want to set my multiple copy interval from here my primary offset wants to be 24 plus whatever i want spacing to be in between my polylines Secondary offset, same thing, that 48 inches plus 1.25, that same spacing that I want. Once I press OK, if I right click, that's, this gets us our alternate draw behavior. So right clicking, dragging out, I'm holding that right click. I want to draw past the bounds of my outermost rightmost wall and then let go of right click. And then when I drag down, that's my alternate, right? So there we go. From here... I can marquee select similar, or if I had that polyline tool drummed up, I can shift select everything here. And I'm going to do center object. From center object, I want to go center between two points. I want to center between this topmost wall and the bottommost wall. Now, something that might happen, you might kind of goof this up. We can, of course, redo that easy enough. Here's just showing that marquee select similar and then subsequently select all similar, center, center between. Just make sure you're snapping to something that's equal on both sides. So outside of the wall in this case, straight down to outside of the wall. It's gonna give us two position markers. One is where I drew that particular reference. The other is where it was already in existence from left to right in our X value. So when I maintain that X value, now I need to do this one more time and I'm gonna center between the left and rightmost wall. Make sure I'm doing that perfectly. Okay. And we've got our reference versus our centered, our already pre-centered in the way Y value. There we go. Now we know this grid is completely centered in this room. All right. We're overlapping because we're going to cut away this grid. We want equal distance on the grid all the way around this structure. So the next thing I need to do is set up some kind of a mask so I can subtract from these objects. So I'm going to click into the room and then in our edit toolbar, make room polyline. Now I want to concentrically resize this because we're going to cut this away, but I want the spacing to be the same as my grid spacing. So if I hit a comma or C key as I drag this in, we're concentrically resizing this. Okay. If I drag directly to the left in this case and hit tab or enter, Keep in mind, I held C up until the point where it initiated that concentric resize. Then I let go of C, but I kept my left mouse button clicked. Now I'm hitting tab or enter. This brings up enter coordinates. I want to make sure polar is checked. And then I'm going to set that distance. Here's my 1.25. There we go. We've got a perfect offset here. Now I can 
uh, copy paste in this case and from copy paste we get this node here this is an edit handle the circular one this is another cone centric resize with a copy paste function all right now i'm sizing this to be much greater than where my grids are and then i'm going to use the subtraction in our edit toolbar to subtract that intersection all right so here's essentially my mask now if it helps you to really see what the mask is because we need to make one more polyline you can open this up throw in some fill style maybe an angle hatch something like this probably something at a 45 degrees they actually have an angle hatch that makes it really clear to see what's going on and then i can click into the room again make one more room polyline concentrically resize this and all i'm doing is I'm making sure that this is cutting through the path of all of my border polylines, all right? Since it is, I get to fence select. This makes it so that it's gonna select everything this passes through. Once I have that fence selection, I can subtract my mask. Look what it does, it cut all of our polylines. I'm gonna get rid of our fence select polyline so we can really see this. Look at that, it cut these perfectly to the room. Now we have a few left over we can just get rid of these real quick that's easy enough uh, especially if we want to marquee select similar or use the polyline tool to just shift marquee grab those cut them out of the way and there's one more step of this that's really important we can only convert so many polylines at a time so we've got our polyline tool selected we're going to shift select a number of these and then we get to convert these polylines and I'm going to convert them to the tray ceiling. Once I convert to tray ceiling, I'm going to have to remember my settings because I have to do this again because we have a limit on how many we can convert at once. Here's my tray ceiling specification. I'm going to say that this is 0.5, but keep in mind that's going to bring up this error message thickness of the specified structure. What does that mean? We need to edit the structure, make sure that the structure is less than the value of our overall tray ceiling. And I also wanna uncheck use room ceiling material for sides and use room ceiling material for top. Why is that? I want my searing, ceiling material in this case to be a, a metal to replicate the T grid. And I want the actual tray ceilings to be some kind of acoustical texture to replicate that acoustical panel tile, all right? Now I can press okay, simple enough. I just need to remember all those settings. That's the last bit of this. So same thing, we can use the polyline tool. We can do a shift select, grab the rest of these. If you grab too many, you're not gonna be able to convert it, but it looks like I still have convert polyline. Pick up that tray ceiling. This is all just the same exact action, but make sure that you're remembering your settings. If it helps you, you can always screenshot your settings and paste it back into the shot. Now, when we're converting this many at once, you might get a little hang up on your computer. There we go. It took another couple seconds and this populated. Here's where I've got that 0.5 inch. I'm going to set this to just 0.25. Doesn't really matter. I'm not even going to frame it. I could change that to whatever I want. Uncheck these two. Press OK. Now we've got a full tray ceiling. What's our next step? Now it took a while for that to convert, just be patient with it. It will do it, depends on the speed of your system. I've got a really fast system. That took about 20 seconds to convert, but here we go. We've got a T-grid ceiling. Now, take a look at where we're looking at. In the case that you need this to look inverted, we would essentially be doing the invert property of what we did before. So we could take all of these grids and cut it from another grid, which essentially inverts this whole function. But just to show the function of what we've got so far, I'm gonna paint black right here. And we're gonna just do plan, why not? Doesn't matter in this case, but we're essentially creating that grid. Now, a great thing about this is we can take a light material and just paint one or two of these spots because they are all individual trays, all right? So we can generate an acoustical light from this as well. Now I do have a acoustical ceiling tile texture here that I'm gonna cheat and use. And it's gonna take a second to apply to this room, right? So if I do on a planned basis. Also think I have a troffer light. 
although I'm not sure if I named it right. Oh, I did, aha. So if I switch to component mode and this is set to stretch, I might need to uh, change the orientation, but I should be able to just paint one individual tray ceiling. Now, keep in mind when we're doing tray ceilings like this, Chief is having to rebuild all of these trays. So this will slow down action in your plan. So it would be kind of nice if this was the last thing that you did. There also might be a way that you can just convert this to one symbol so that it didn't need to rebuild as we went. And that would be a little bit more advanced. So I'm just painting in individual tray ceilings, a trough or light that I generated. And this is all just a material based light. So I'd actually have to drop in some kind of a light source for this to look correct. But let's just take a look at what this looks like once we hit a ray traced rendering mode. Pretty dang cool. Now you can mess around with the parameters of the trays themselves. You can adjust their offsets, etc. But there we go. There we've got a method for creating a very, very accurate tray ceiling system. Also, this is also just the way we might make a coffered ceiling, including adding rope lights and moldings. Let me know if you've got any comments or questions. And uh, yeah, till next time. Appreciate you.